happy Wednesday afternoon to you guys. I hope you're having a great day. I hope the sun is shining where you live. It's not here. It's cold and overcast, but it's a great day to sew. Um, so what the project for today is these fantastic cable knit stockings. I got these on Amazon. I'll leave the link below. I was, I'm so surprised at the quality of these, really. I thought they were going to be, you know, cheesy. But they're really not and they're they're nice enough that i could unpick the cuff with no difficulty the cuff i don't know if you can see but the cuff is actually finished on both sides it's not raw so i have no concern about this fraying and i i don't i'm not forced to try to jam it under my needle um and not have enough clearance so i know some of you guys are intimidated by christmas stockings i just don't want you to be at all they're not really that scary um, it particularly a lot of you guys are worried about knits so this is a chunky knit um, and I will show you on this sample that I just finished um, I did unpick the the cuff um, and the, here's some like tips for you so if you're gonna be dealing with a chunky knit you want a really thick font you don't want it to get swallowed up inside this knit and you're definitely going to want some water soluble stabilizer on top, some sort of a topper um, to keep those stitches from getting sucked down into the knit. The only other, two other things, sticky, I hate using sticky anything, you probably do too, but sticky will be your friend on this project. Um, I used a fast frame for this, worked great. You could also use your 505, you know, whatever. Um, and the final thing that I think is really important, especially on a chunky knit like this, is a basting box. So if you make sure that you do all those things, um, I really don't think you'll have any problem at all. This is just about to be, uh, pull the basting, all that's left on this, pull the basting stitches out, pull my topper off, and close up my back. And I am done with this. So um, I will show you... All right, guys, you know how it is, um, real life. So my printer is giving me an error. It doesn't want to print my template, but since today's the day we planned to do this project, we're not going to let the technical difficulties of um, our modern life get in our way. So what I've done, it doesn't matter. This is not rocket, rocket science. So um, what I have done, is I just measured the width of my um, stocking, which is six inches. And so half of that is three. And then um, the, the height of my cuff is three inches. So I came down an inch and a half and marked the center. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. You may just have to trust me on it, but there's a little teeny uh, blue water soluble mark right there so we are all set we could do assembly line fashion and i think we will with just these two and i'll show you exactly how i did that so six inches and we want the three inch mark which is right there i'm just going to throw a pin in there so i have a pin right here and then I'm just going to come down an inch and a half, which is right there. I hope you can see this all right. And throw a little blue water soluble dot on that spot. So good. We're good, good, good. Got to push through, guys. Push through no matter what happens. So that's what we're going to do. And you know what? What's the worst that can happen, really? Um, they're going to love them. I, I doubt anyone's going to have a laser in their pocket and pull out to see if the name is exactly where you and I want it to be. So, okay, that's that. Let me get this computer out of the way. Well, actually, no, we're going to need them. So I created a because I do want all of the names to be very similar. So I created a name drop design where I'll just change the name and it will space it and size it exactly how the one before, you know, the previous one 
was with the same font and the same spacing, etc. So that they look, you know, all professional and cute. So when, and you probably already know this, so, but for those of you that don't, it will be news. For those of, that you do, th those of you that do, it's just gonna be review. So when you're dealing with the name drop components, you've got your box, and you've got your line that your um, that you that marks the center of your box. So what it does is you can change the letters, and it, it's kind of like envelopes. It's a, kind of exactly like an envelope. So um, you have envelope one, and you have name drop one. So what I like to do is start with my my biggest name, and in this case, our biggest name is that I'm doing today is Theodore, so T-H-E-O-D-O-R-E. -E. I've already done this, but I'm just gonna show you. When you click off of it, it fills out that box nicely. So that's, our, now I know that our biggest name is gonna fit in this box, so I'm good to go. I'm not gonna start with Theodore. Theodore is our uh, youngest, Theodore is the youngest of our five grandchildren, and not only is he the youngest of the five, but Theodore is a twin, and he's the youngest in his twin set. So Theodore is our little, 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 littlest baby. Um, but we're going to actually start with Grandma and Grandpa Claus, which is me and my dear hubby. So I'll start with my name first. My name's bigger. So, okay, here we go. So you see, I just hit enter, it filled in the box, I'm good to go, I just need to save this to my USB uh, drive, and then I'll um, stabilize the stocking up, get it hooped, and we'll take it over to the machine. So when you're doing these stockings, there is a little bit of just try a couple things out and see what works. So there's not enough clearance. I could do it on the flatbed machine, that would be easier if I wanted to sit and babysit and hold fabric out of the way, which I don't want to do that. So. Um, there, you can see there's not a lot of clearance there. It is stretchy, but it, it's just not enough. I did run a trace and I didn't like how close it was. So rather than take a chance and be sorry, I'm just going, these stockings are so nice and these edges are finished so well. I'm just going to take this seam out and it's almost looks like they thought that's what you were going to do and they finished it very nicely as a result. So I'm just going to pick these couple of seriously running stitches, I mean, is all they are. Um, and you can either put it back together by hand if you want, if you don't have a million to do like I do, or you can just close it up on the machine. But you can see how this is, how this has been joined makes this, this will be a lot easier. And it will give me, you know, like some peace of mind about it. I won't be as concerned about it. Then I can get it pretty flat like this. All right, that's what I want to do. So I think what I'm going to use here, which I hate, hate with a passion, but I think it'll be important for this project. I'm going to use sticky back. Arr. So if you don't know how to use that, you're going to mark your fast frame with enough to be able to roll over the edges and stick to your frame. So I hate to use it. I don't like anything sticky. Um, but I think because this is the hoop that I want to use, I think it's going to be our best bet. So let's try this. Oh. Let's see. And you're going to score your paper a little bit so that you can peel it off. Get it flat. You can There we go. 
good enough. Now we just need a small piece of topper, as I said, on top to keep those stitches sitting high up. And you could throw a drop of 505 on this if you want. I like to live dangerously, so I'm not going to do that. But I also don't need that much, so let me get rid of that little piece. Just kind of stuff it in there. There we go. I am going to take a couple of pieces of scotch tape and just tape this right down, just like that. That's all I'm really going to do. The basting box and 2.2 seconds is going to have that all in place and we will no longer have to worry about it. So just throw a couple little pieces of scotch tape just to keep it. There you go. Good. We're good to go. Now we'll take this over to the machine. So I also just want to show you a quick little trick and I'm going to need an exacto knife or a razor knife so let me move well I probably can get away with these little baby scissors where are they um, hmm. here they are so as I said I don't like sticky at all but I also don't like wasting things so what I'm gonna do and one of the nice things about sticky if there is any is that you can repair it pretty easily. So, you know what, I really do want a knife. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can grab a razor knife. It would make a lot faster work at this and more exact. Okay, got it. So, as I was saying, one of the nice things about Sticky is that it's pretty easy to repair. So, what I'm gonna do is just Trim this out by lifting this up and just going across it with a razor knife. And you don't want to do it too aggressively because it will tear on you, like mine just did. But not to worry. We're just fine. We're gonna be just fine. All right, just keep going. Keep going all the way around and get this bad boy out of there. And just kind of score it gently. Don't, you know, go right to town. If you had a sharper blade, you wouldn't have this issue at all. But, you know, we start where we are. We work with what we got. And so, this is our last piece right here, and we're just going to zip this right out. Now, see, I'm getting a little heavy-handed with my dull blade, but got it. All right. Now, just pop this out, okay? There you go. It's out. Now, all you have to do is cut a small piece, and I hope it's not too small because that's a whole nother ball game. There we go. Cut a small piece and patch this little frame. Um, I need to use the end of our pick. Zip across this so I can get it out of there. Okay, just like so. Throw your carrier away. And lay your new piece right in there. Just like that. And who cares about this? Just, you know, cut it off, fold it over, whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want, however you want. Okay, 
There we go. So now we're ready to roll. Just make sure it's all down. That side right there is pretty close. So let's get that better aligned. There, that will be better, just like that. Okay, good enough. Okay, here we go, we're ready. Let's clean our mess up so we can keep moving. And I'll show you. Let's get our hoop out of the way, our fast frame. Put a ruler away and our razor knife. Okay, now all you want to do with this, if you happen to pick up on these, you know, you can really see if you give put give it a little tension I don't know I hope you can see that I can get right in there and just get one started that's all you need to do seriously it's like a running stitch almost and just pick that right out and we're gonna zip this right back together here's the last of our stitches just pop them right out see how easy you can do this you can do this. This is easy. Okay, let's just get these out of here. Work your way down. Go slow. You have time. And even if you don't, still go slow. Okay. Okay, there we go. See? Now we got all that out of there. Now this one's ready to hoop. And because we just saved some time over here, all we have to do is get this in place. Now I already marked this. The cuff is six inches wide by three inches in height, so our mark is um, at the three inch mark and one and a half inches. Uh, now I did, I'm using this center. Um, let me make sure you can see that. And if you can't, I'll get you zoomed in a little more. Bring you in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So right here, in, a fa in the fast frames, there's a notch. There's also one at the bottom. I'm not going to worry about really anything else because I'm going to use my mat um, to make sure I'm nice and straight. And I'm just going to focus on that center notch. So bam, there I go. Now you don't want to pull this too much either. That's another thing. Just push it down so it makes good contact with that sticky. Okay. And what I like to do is just kind of, you don't want these flaps in your way, so I'm going to throw a couple of pins in there. I can find my pins. Here we go. Throw a couple pins in here just to keep this cuff out of your way. Now we just need a small piece of topper, as I said, on top to keep those stitches sitting high up. And you could throw a drop of 505 on this if you want. Hi guys. Sorry about the racket, the machine's still going, but I just wanted to say that um, I've had tons of distractions tonight. It's um, my Christmas lights, I, I'm still trying to tweak them. The phone has rang, my girlfriend called, my son called, all kinds of distractions. And yet, I have gotten, um, let's see, I'm on my fifth stocking now. I have two more picked and marked, all ready to go. And so I need 11, and I, so that's, what is that, 5, 6, 7, oh, here's a note. I have three all marked and ready to go. Um, so 
that's great. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'll have four left. I probably won't finish them tonight, but soon, um, by tomorrow they'll all be done. So you can do this. It's not really that hard. Um, the important things to remember are pick a nice chunky font. Um, just because your machine can go fast doesn't mean you have to go fast. Uh, I think I'm going at about 600 right now. Um, save a little stuff by not replacing your sticky every single time. We like to save time and money wherever we can, and that's a way that you can do that. Um, don't forget your water soluble on the top. And don't stretch. Do not stretch your, if you're working on a knit like this, this is a cable knit. If you're working on a knit, don't stretch it. Um, and you'll be good, and you're going to like them. You're going to be beautiful, you'll be beautiful in your home, you'll be beautiful as kids. Um, if you're making them to sell, your customers will love them, so you can do it.